Okay, thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. And um, thank you, especially to the organizing committee for accepting our presentation in this conference. We are very excited to be here. As we all probably know, uh, open science um, tries to guarantee the transparency of research work, uh, sharing the different stages of the workflow. Uh, in recent years, uh, many organizations decided to support this kind of acti activities through the development of public policy uh, or the um, encouraging este, ah, ah, <laughs> through the development of public policy um, but this uh, and also financing open science initiatives but uh, these efforts vary greatly regionally and uh, especially many times are not as engaging as the research community would like to. Uh, it has been observed as well um, that many communities have organized themselves to encourage this kind of activities and uh, especially in some cases dedicated to reduce gender gap in STEAM areas or also to uh, teach open practices and uh, tools such as Metadocencia DAS. In this context, we wonder how these communities of practice influence the dissemination and implementation of open science in Latin America. To start, we would like to introduce ourselves. Here we are uh, Jessica Formoso, Mariela Reingeberg, Patricia Lotto couldn't make it personally, but uh, was part of our work. And myself uh, is uh, Laura Lacensi. We are part of uh, accessibility, impact measurement, and communication teams of Metadocencia. Also, Julian Buede, who is part of communication team, helped us with the slides. So let's take a closer look to this concept, community of practice. Um, Community of practice means uh, a group of people that enables together to develop a collective process of learning um, about some different area of human endeavor. According to Etienne and Beverly Wenger trainers' work, it has to do with domain because they have a shared space or area of interest, competence, and commitment that distinguishes them from others. They uh, are also identified by building community through joint activities, discussions, problem solving, also uh, sharing information and relationship building. A community of practice always encourages the, the idea sharing and fosters that kind of willingness to share knowledge. And practice means that the members of a community are actual practitioners of this area of domain. They are going to come to the community, share ideas and knowledge, and then go back to their practice and improve their performance. Also, we want to address this dimension of today's communities of practice scenario, which are the online platform uh, channels that allows these communities and encourages these communities to expand the, uh, I their ideas and their work. As Schmidt and, um, let me check on the surname, Matilda Ackerland work uh, show, online platforms provide opportunities for participation and inclusion in new ways and are great to uh, expand these communities of practice. Uh, scholar communities have gathered for centuries, uh, motivated by furthering human knowledge and development of, of humanity. And these platforms sound great, but these communities also struggle with the fact that the platforms are um, private corporate property, and that uh, creates new issues that we're going to address later in the conversation. Okay, to accomplish our purpose, we, um, we uh, conducted exploratory analysis of terms open science, ciencia abierta in Spanish and ciencia abierta in Portuguese uh, through Google Trends search. 
And uh, afterwards, we uh, developed a network analysis of tweets to see how influential users are connected to communities of practice. In this small graph, we only wanted to show that um, in the context that some uh, local researchers like Fernanda Weigel and others are showing that the global consensus on open science that was encouraged by UNESCO's uh, open science recommendation in November 2020 has reached to a region, there is still a lot of difference between the conceptual development of the term open science and the uh, concepts Ciencia Abierta and uh, Ciencia Abierta in Portuguese, like the, the line show. Um, in the regional breakdown, we can see that Ciencia Abierta is more used in Mexico, Colombia, Venezuela, Argentina, and Chile, and uh, in Portuguese only uh, relates to Brazilian territory. Thank you, Laura. Laura, sorry, I changed your name. <laughs> okay, so we conducted an analysis of tweets that were posted by a variety of users and then mentioned either as a hashtag or as a part of the text one of these terms open source, open access, open data, open science, and their traduc traduction translations to Spanish and uh, Portuguese. Um, bear with me with the English, <laughs> sorry. And we use this to analyze if community, communities of practice and their accounts had an influence of, on the conversation that was carried, carried out. Um, okay, so... Here in this graph, you can see, on this plot, you can see uh, how frequent each of these terms was, how many tweets mentioned them, and the, more, the most used one, ones were open source and its translation to Código Abierto in Spanish. After, one, after, sorry, after we collected this information, which was over uh, 16,000 tweets in a period of a month, uh, we filter this um, data to just retain those that were posted in Spanish or in uh, Portuguese. We also just kept those that were um, related to personal accounts or communities accounts. We excluded commercial accounts and those related to uh, gover government um, entities. And we also tried to pinpoint the location of the user, which was uh, trickier than we thought initially. <laughs> uh, we used their location and the description of each user, and we excluded those that explicitly mentioned that they uh, lived or were originally from Spain or Portuguese. Um, and we assumed the rest was Latin American. So it's uh, a big assumption <laughs> there. And with that, we. Uh, we had a sample of over 2,000 tweets generated by 1,400 different accounts and retweeted over 7,000 times by 4,700 accounts approximately. We used this information to carry out a network analysis. Each user was a node and the links between the nodes, the edges, were the retweets. So in this case, we have a tweet by, uh, posted by Our Lady Buenos Aires. So I wasn't using the microphone back then, right? OK, thanks. Uh, <laughs> I hope you heard me. Uh, and I retweeted it. This is my account. And Metalsencia retweeted, retweeted it also. So we have three nodes from three different users and two links, one between myself and Our Lady Buenos Aires, targeted links because I retweeted something they posted, and one from Metalsencia to Our Lady Buenos Aires. We have no link between each other because in that period, I didn't retweet anything from Metalsencia. Metalsencia didn't retweet anything I posted with those specific terms. A concept we are going to use, and I wanted to clarify briefly, was the measure of betweenness centrality. Because we, mm, this concept shows us the number of times a node, any node, 
is in the middle of a path between two other nodes, so it works as a bridge. So in this case, our ladies would be a bridge between myself and Metal Sensia. If I take this node, our connection dies, and that makes uh, the that specific node important to the man to the um, creation of the network. So we took all those tweets and all those accounts and we classified them. We checked if uh, which accounts were uh, part were accounts of communities of practice which was sometimes very easily identifiable and sometimes sometimes not so much. And then we got metrics to try to compare how influential were the users from one group and the other. So we have average of retweets, percentage of accounts with original tweets, that is the percentages, percentage of accounts in each group that has uh, posted original tweets instead of just retweeting. We have average between the centrality, which is the measure I mentioned previously, and we have percent percentage of influential user accounts that I will explain how we extract it in just a second. So you can easily see that average of retweets is um, is, is not that high, um, but it's higher in community accounts and in personal accounts. So maybe there is not that move, that much movement with the terms that we search for, but it's still more uh, movement coming from the community accounts. The percentage of uh, um, original tweets is a lot higher in community accounts and in personal accounts. Average between the centrality is also a lot higher, so communities accounts are um, frequently in the path between two individual users. And influential accounts, well, uh, there was there's a lot of different criteria to measure how influential a user is. And the one we chose is how many individual accounts retweeted that account. So. That would mean that, for example, if I retweeted 30 posts that were uh, posted by Metal Sensia, I only count as one, one point for that measure. Uh, we use as a threshold a uh, cutoff of paint, uh, 20 points, sorry. And you can again see that uh, the percentage of influential user, influential accounts, influential users in the community groups is a lot larger than in the personal accounts. We also wanted to see what happened with all the community accounts, how they relate to each other, and we took the ones we found in the previous search, and we also added additional accounts that we know are from the region. This is... Um, I uh, know a lot of um, accounts, a lot of communities are not included. It was a sample. And uh, each link shows the number of followers they share. And what we could see is that even though you can see there are some communities that are a lot, uh, that had um, links that are stronger, that have more followers in common, like Open ABC and Charisma, and others that have a lot less, like El, Cajo, El Gato y la Caja, and I don't know, um, Our Ladies or Datalat. What we found is that each community has at least one follower in common with each of the other communities, with the exception of the one that's over there that, that is Connectorial. Connectorial is a very young community with very few followers and still shares followers with most of the communities. So, it's... Hi. Okay. Hello. So, another analysis that we did was another network analysis where each of the nodes is represented either by a, by a community or by a user account. And the edges, we have an edge between two nodes if the user is following that community. Yes. Once that the, we did that network, that we construct that network, we did a modularity analysis. This modularity analysis gave us um, some clusters. This means some groups of communities. 
And for example, there are some clusters like this one that is over here that is more related to our ladies groups, for example, from Santiago, Sao Pablo, Rio and Lima. We have other clusters, for example, this one that relates our ladies with metaustensia, that is more related to geographic location from most of the people that form those, those communities. And we also have different clusters, okay, thank you. <laughs> like, for example, ILA with Fundación Vía Libre and Carisma that are more related to uh, ethics in data. That's where what we thought about the, the relations between each cluster. So, as final remarks, we recently I told you about modularity. There are, we have these different groups. Each group has like a dense, um, dense like a dense connection. Sorry, dense, dense connection between the the communities that are in those cluster, and they have like they are not so related with the other clusters or the other communities that are in each of the other clusters. So these different groups, we find that we are mostly associated to geographic localizations and the purpose of each of the communities of practice. And then, and then no, after, something <laughs> before Shethi told you about the differences between the community accounts and the personal accounts and the difference in the retweets each of one had, and also in the, the proportion of influential users. And we found that in this exploratory analysis, communities have like a higher dissemination power of the terms related to open science. And then with the analysis of the um, between the central measure, we thought that these communities of practice have a key role in the connections between users. That this means that in generating this huge net. Please, yeah. But we wanted to, to tell you some difficulties that we have in this study. The first and the most important was that when we start thinking how we could study this with tweets, um, was before Elon Musk had Twitter, <laughs> it was to control of Twitter, and then what we happened is that we had a restrict access to the data, we couldn't have all the things that we wanted to study. This is something that happened with data, but we wanted to do a, like a time series analysis and those things, and we had to restrict for a month, but we find some things that are interesting and encouraging. <laughs> And other difficulties were like this one, perhaps investigation something happens, sometimes happens, that is that, for example, the definition of influential user in the bi bibliography, <laughs> um, there wasn't one definition. There were lots of definitions. So we used the one that we could measure. And where? Another difficulty, that <laughs> this also happens when we work with data, I think, is that we had to do like a, like a label by hand, which were related to communities, <laughs> which were related to users. So this also was part of our analysis. And well, we want to thank you all <laughs> for being here. <laughs> Well, if you want to join us, you can go to metalsencia.org. We want to thank CSNS for being our fiscal sponsorship. And if you want to ask any question, we are here. Sorry about that. Thank you very much.